Hi folks, hope you're all doing well out there still. This video is not going to be really about social media software or open source software or anything. It's uh, just a brief look at the game called SnowRunner, which is produced for Windows, I think, only. I've got it installed on Linux, but I'm not going to be doing a video about how to install it or the gameplay or anything like that. I just want to show off some of the physics in this game and the effects and so on. I just did this ad hoc last night so I didn't go and seek out all the beautiful sunsets and some of the other really maybe interesting things but it will just give a feel maybe for why I've spent about 135 hours on this game and I'm still going quite strong. I just love the peace and the tranquility of the game itself and it's just gelling very well with me in terms of the gameplay. You can also multiplayer this online of course as well with other players but yeah this is just a really a quick look at how I'm playing it and what it looks like for those that don't even know anything about it. And yeah, just sit back and enjoy it. It shouldn't be too long or too complicated either to follow along with. Right, so here we are. We're busy on a mission to, I think, the farm at Smith's Dam. The things to have a good look at here is watch the wheels. How the wheels move in the suspension and even the water detail and so on. This is one of the more advanced trucks and you get you obviously got to unlock these things you know as you're playing the game the earlier game the early part of the game is really frustrating because your trucks get stuck a lot you haven't picked up all the techniques yet on the winching and how the crane works and various things so yeah it can be frustrating I've, I've been stuck in places for a half an hour up to an hour nearly where I've either eventually got out or in frustration I've you know just recovered the truck and started again so you'll obviously want to do as many missions as possible in the beginning and try and you know get the better truck, better better tires, that sort of thing. Some of these places can be really sticky in the snow or the ice. But I mean just look at that detail on the suspension, how the wheels are moving and so on. It really is almost like you're sitting there. I'm going to demonstrate here as well quickly how to do a quick winch. Or you can just press the F key and it'll grab onto a tree or whatever nearby where the, whatever the range of the of the winch actually is you have got manual control of the winch as well you can decide exactly what objects you want to try and connect it to but if quick winch works it's one way of sort of getting through if, you, if you're driving like it's fairly close to some trees Physics also on the mud and the and the water is just like unbelievable. This is the view inside the cab. Some of the cabs are also quite nice in detail. What I didn't show you was a night shot actually. All the instrument lights are on, the gauges and stuff do actually work. You can see the speedometer and this and that as well. There are one or two missions you have to do in the beginning, tasks, I can't remember what they were, but you have to do it from first driver perspective and they're actually incredibly difficult because you can't see ahead of you and under you what you're going over and they actually send you over a really steep sort of winding very narrow track in a jeep and I had to redo that a couple of times before I managed to get it done. So you will learn as well the idea is not always to go for the mud, uh, although it's a lot of fun and everything, you can get pretty stuck. So, you, you know, if there's a better way around something, you take the way around. In the beginning also, a lot of the bridges are not in place. You've got to go and haul cargo there to have the bridges built. And so it gets a lot easier later on once you've got all the bridges built and you've figured out sort of which are the better routes to use, you know, across the maps. And then while driving you also keep an eye on your fuel supply on the left bottom of the screen and on the right hand side you've got your different gears auto will often work especially in the beginning but you will often want to use low range which will engage your diff locks and so on on the truck and you quickly realize as well if you don't have all-wheel drive as well as diff locks you're going to suffer in this game that's for sure so we're just heading towards the farm here we're nearly there Briefly demonstrate 
sort of how the crane operates as well. I'm not going to un manually unload the the cargo. It is nice. A lot of people have criticised that about this game now that you can auto cargo load and, and unload unless of course your cargo falls off and you're going to have to load it with your crane anyway. And there are some missions where you, we like logging and certain other things where you have to use the crane. But it you know it makes the game you can sort of stick to the fun parts of the game as well I think which is quite nice you don't have to you can decide you can play hard mode and really do everything manually as well if you want to so I am playing a bit of a hybrid mix here and I've also discovered some things like why won't the cargo unload well you know why it won't unload because it came loose while you were driving and it's not packed anymore absolutely befuddled me I couldn't understand what was going on it took me hours and hours and hours to figure out in fact, you'll see some cargo standing there uh, on that loading platform. That is cargo that I put there because I didn't know how to un how to, to, to actually get it delivered in the end. Now I actually know. You can just repack so that it packs on the truck and then it'll unload the cargo. Lots of little funny quirks like that that you, you do sort of pick up eventually. Right, so we've got to the loading dock and you'll see this is the automated unload. Uh, that option. I'm just showing the menu, the V menu on the left over there is also where you can stop the engine, detach the trailer, recover to the garage, you can turn on the beacon lights like that. If you've got fuel uh, nearby or at a fuel station you can refuel, you can repair, if you're carrying repair racks like I've got on top of the truck. And this is the crane mode, so basically you put out your anchors to stabilize the truck and you can extend the crane, turn it around, connect it to uh, cargo, uh, winch it up, lower it, basically everything you need to do. Obviously a lot's also going to depend on the strength of your crane and the stability of the truck as to what you can actually load and pick up. The game is quite realistic around things like that as well as the physics, you know, through the mud and the sand. Depending on what tire set you've actually installed on the truck, you can you can really really struggle if you don't have mud tires again like the beginning of the game you haven't unlocked proper mud tires it's, it's an absolute nightmare there was the pack and unpacked on the left that i'm showing be very careful of remove cargo if you click remove cargo it's gone you've lost the cargo it's lost to the game you can always unpack like i'm doing here or place your cargo somewhere else and come and collect it later if you need to everything that you drop or anything in the game you, you can find later on as well So to complete this task or mission that I'm busy with now, I have to fully unload the required cargo. You'll see in the top right there, it says delivered to farm and it says what, what sort of cargo I had to deliver, right? I've actually delivered it and I've got my, my experience reward and my cash reward as well. So that's the end of that. That's where I am at the moment. I'm on level 28 and $818,000 or so. This just shows some of the time near a sunset where you can see the color of the trees and a little bit of light mist coming over the farmland as well. So realistic again. So as night is coming on, I'm just showing you the lights in use and power of the lights depends obviously on what lights you've mounted on the truck, any accessory lights, that sort of thing. And the physics also follow things like dips and hills and things depending, you know, what you can actually see. So trailers cost money in the game. So instead of just leaving it lying in the field somewhere, which I could do, I'm bringing, coming into one of these depots and there is a trailer store there where I can sell my trailer back to them or I could buy you know other trailers I'm going to use for other missions or tasks so the trailers obviously all differ some more fuel tankers some more generators some more seismic detectors and various other things so I'm just going to sell it here get my money back and then I can get on with you know the next mission or task that I'm going to go on Here's another shot just crossing some water and mud again. So just have a look at the detail on the water and the ripples, you know, on the, on the movement of the water as you're driving through it as well. It's, it's like you're there, you know. I can just imagine this in VR, how stunning it would actually be. I'm using a Logitech 29 
racing wheel to drive and that is why I can steer pretty easily and I've got the pedals, the brake and the clutch that I use for the, uh, the truck. I'm mostly in automatic mode at this stage but I mean you can, like I said, in hard mode you can drive it you know, fully manually as well to get the full experience. The scenes that I'm actually not showing, the map I'm not actually on at the moment is the ones where you've got ice and snow and so on, slightly different issues to tackle and the ice of course is very very slippery you know if you haven't got chain wheels or anything else you, you're going to struggle. So various of the maps have also got a sort of a featured centerpiece and on the Smithfield Dam of course this one is the dam itself and what you're seeing here is I'm just taking the road that actually crosses over the dam wall and it gives you some quite nice views you know left and right looking at the dam and the subsequent river going down the bottom you can see the sun there reflecting off the water as well I think this is a morning I think this is in the morning again there's that mist hanging over the trees and that's what happens if I'm not watching when I'm driving and of course you're going to be banging in to see things. So I'm just driving here around and below the dam wall to see, show you the view from below. And you'll see also here I'm going to hit a tree. Depending on the weight of your truck or your vehicle, you know, Jeep or whatever the case is, some of the lighter trees and undergrowth, it can bash through. Bigger stuff, it can't. So you've got to go around and be careful as well because if you hit it, yeah, you're going to damage, cause damage to engine or suspension or wheels. And if you don't carry a repair pack with you, well, then you could be sort of out of that, you know, that's the end of that mission for you. So there's the view of the, of the dam with the water. You can see also under gravity the truck goes forward under its own weight if I'm not holding the brakes. There's a bit of light rain starting to fall now as well and observe the tracks there behind the truck. It actually leaves tracks in and trails you know in the sand or the mud or the snow wherever you're traveling. See overcast sky sort of with the causing a bit of rain. Again look at that water texture. I mean the details on this side of the river you know where the sluice gate is actually letting the water through. Now, I do have a snorkel fitted on this vehicle as well. There's a type of upgrades you can do so that allows you to drive through water with a fair bit of depth as well. But then remembering a truck can become buoyant, you know, and you could lose your traction. So that's Smithfield Dam. And we're nearly done. I think just another clip or two. So this is the TUZ420 Tataran, which is a Russian vehicle. One of the best scouts in the game, the one that everybody tries to get hold of. I've obviously upgraded this one a little bit with two different repair packs, spare fuel tanks, ultra-wide tires. It's an 8x8 uh, drive, which again, this thing gets to just about anything. The only bad things about it really is, you know, it doesn't have a very good turning circle. Uh, that truck actually had a better turning circle than this one's got. But it's very stable, doesn't tend to roll over that easily. Uh, I'm just taking it on a short little trip here through some of the close mud. I'm not going to take it too far. But just to show you sort of how it handles. The other one downside of this vehicle is no snorkel. So if you go into the water, you can do quick trips in, into into and through the water but it's not going to get you through very deep water so there's no perfect vehicle really in this game but this is one of my favorite scouts I really enjoy it and I can go really really far on this with a tank of gas as well so I'll just show you here how it climbs rocks 
that's the inside cab view of course again you can see there my spare wheels more repair equipment in the back I've packed this thing absolutely full of repair equipment it's sort of for those long missions where you've got to cross sometimes two maps sometimes even three maps sometimes you don't get a fuel station and you can't carry out repairs how those horns on the top there and the extra lights this thing really lights up everything at night so I'm still in automatic mode so I haven't got the flock actually engaged here I think I am going to change down into low range as you can see there I'm just not getting any grip there we go okay we're going to low low range usually climbs a bit better if it still can't manage then you chuck the winch out which I'm doing now and that invariably does pull you over you know or through anything as long as you've got a handy telephone pole or a tree or something nearby and just be careful when you release it because you know these things can happen physics does exist in the game this is also the reason why the autonomous winch, winch is something that people go for. The autonomous winch allows you to operate the winch while the engine is cut out because the engines won't start if the vehicle is lying upside down or on its side. So there I'm actually making use of the autonomous winch which is using battery power. It's not as powerful. There I'm manually placing the winch to the rock or pole on the other side so that I can just winch it back onto its wheels again. In many cases if you don't have an autonomous winch and your engine is off, again game over, you are not going to finish that mission. So I just tend to put autonomous winches on everything I've got. Okay, release the winch. But yeah, okay, so it just shows you it going over rocks here, and yeah, you know, many times people don't even want to complete missions and things. They just take drive with drives with up to four other friends on dusty, you know, trails. There's a lot of third-party maps people have produced for it as well that you can explore and just drive around and have lots of fun. So it's not necessarily about scoring the points and winning the game sort of thing. You're competing with yourself in this game. But the multiplayer ones, you can play along with other people and combine, you know, and work together on missions and tasks as well. For me, it's just, yeah, a combination of relaxing and enjoyment. And, um, yeah, I think I'll be playing this for a while still. I'm quite enjoying it. So that's really it. I'll just let it play out for another couple of seconds. And I'll catch you in my next video on something a little bit more technical, probably. So stay safe out there and enjoy.